Acapulco, Mexico. This is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet, coming in here live from Anarcapoco, Mexico, as you know, and I actually have a first-time guest coming on, very interesting guest. When I first found out what he was doing, I was like, we need to have you on the program. It's it's Titus Gable of the Free Private Cities, and it's it's similar uh, to things like seasteading, uh, although they're not trying to do things out on the ocean, uh, but they're trying to create sort of free areas in the world. It's, in that way, it's similar to Lieberland and what Vichet Lika is doing there. And of course, Vit will be here at Anarchapoco, uh, similar to what Roger Veer is trying to do, buying an island and starting, starting his own country. They're trying to do just cities that are kind of like free cities. And we'll get into that because I don't actually know all the details on it. But uh, they've had quite a bit of uh, success so far, and they're definitely moving forward on a lot of stuff. So we definitely want to know about this and, and potentially move to some of these cities if we can find some free cities out there. Uh, but uh, Titus, before we get started, i got to make sure you're a decent human being. How did you become an anarchist? Well, I wouldn't describe necessarily me as an anarchist, but I'm a, certainly a voluntarist who um, was basically engaged in politics in the in the classical liberal party in Germany for a long time. And um, I just found out that politics is not working, um, that uh, I cannot convince the majority um, uh, about, uh, well, it's basically, uh, the, the, the values of, of liberty and being responsible for yourself and and voluntarism that is nothing that um, will I, I would say in my lifetime ever gain a majority and so I thought I just have to to do something completely different right not changing the system from within which I tried for 30 years without success uh, but just create a new product and in case of success then people can just watch the product and if they like it they can can move uh, into my my sphere which would be a free private city of course yeah that's exactly what i've sort of come to the realization out about as well is that you know, we can't really convince 7 billion people to become voluntarists uh, overnight. Uh, but what we can do is create the systems and create places that they can go to or, or look at and say, oh, that's interesting. And maybe I want to be a part of that. Or so you create a free private city and it does really well, which I'm sure it will do, because every time you have freedom, it always does well. And then people can point to that and say, oh, I wouldn't mind being part of something like that. And before you know it, everyone's basically a voluntarist. And through things like cryptocurrencies and all that kind of stuff, just generally making new systems that just make the old systems obsolete. Uh, very much similar to the, the government taxi system. And you're actually coming in there from Monaco. I, I forgot to mention that. I was just there a few months ago. And I mentioned to you uh, before the show that the one thing I didn't really like, well, there's two things I didn't like about Monaco. One is they didn't really have poker in the casinos, which I was surprised about. Uh, the second thing was they didn't have Uber. It's actually illegal there, which I was like, wait a sec. We can maybe talk about what you think about Monaco in a second here. But, uh, you, you know, the you're basically coming in from Monaco and they don't have uh, uh, Uber there, but uh, many people have realized, hey, Uber is just way better than government taxi systems. Uh, and no one had to go out and change their minds on it. They just, oh, I like this app better. Uh, it's like government taxi or private taxi. It's like private, this one's way better. So we just create all these all these systems. So actually, let's just start from there. You're actually sitting there in Monaco, which I said to you before the show, I'm like, okay, that's a fairly uh, free private city, uh, kind of private, kind of free. I'll Although not that free because they don't have Uber. So why don't you compare uh, Monaco to what you're trying to do? Well, first of all, um, I think um, the reason why, why most people move to Monaco and 80% and of the population is, are not Monagas citizens. They're really people coming from, from uh, the outside world. Um, um, the reason why people are there is basically because they are more or less left alone. Of course, they do not pay direct taxes. This is certainly important, but also the climate is nice and there's security. So security, taxes, and that you're basically left alone and can do your business most, for most people all over the world. They do their business all over the world, but they are left alone by the government. These are the main advantages of Monaco. And I, dis I discovered for myself after so many years of polit political activism and all that, that when I came to Monaco, which is now three years ago, um, I said, I'm absolutely have zero interest to become involved in Monaco politics. And I questioned myself, why is this? And I said, well, what, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for security for, for me and my, uh, my uh, family that we are not robbed when we leave the house. 
um, I want a, a, a clear and simple rules and, and some infrastructure. And if this is given, I, I don't care. I mean, for the rest, please, I, I'm going to, to do what I, what I want. And if somebody can offer that, um, and then people would be happy. And I, I was asking around my, my friends here, Mark, and say, what, what is, what, how do you, you judge this whole situation? And most of them, most of them are also international people have businesses all over the world. And I said, well, it's exactly the same. If, if there's security, a clear legal system, and, and we are left alone, we are happy. And the point is, I said, okay, if this is what people really want, you don't need a prince, you don't need uh, a democracy, you just need, a, a private company can offer that. And, and, and that was basically the, the final point where I was thinking about this concept for, I, I would say, 15 years or so. But this was the final flash where I said, well, that is a for-profit business model. That is not, and, and that is not the, what, what even in, in, in the anarchist libertarian scene, people think, well, there you have the markets and business here, and there, then you have the politics and living together, and we think we have found the ideal way with no government and all that. And I say, look, that is a market. It's, I call it the market of living together. And there is a variety of products. At the moment, we have not many different products, unfortunately. We have basically only the government product, right? But if you can serve the needs of the people, and I think that the people are different. And uh, if, if you or other think we have found the ideal way of living together, I would just politely disagree. I would say there is no one fits it all solution, right? Some people, they are not so much interested in security. They say, I can take care of myself. I have my, I have my gun. Um, other people say, no, I have a family. I do not want to take care of security for myself, but I want to get guaranteed that. Other people say, ah, we do not want to take care of this and this and this and this, and, and, the, and the operator should take care of that, but we are willing to pay and we are willing to, well, uh, to accept some rules. We have all kinds of people. And what I am offering is, look, I'm offering um, something for the freedom-loving people, for the liberty, libertarians, for the liberty-minded people. I say, look, here's my offer. I offer you security. I offer you a fallback legal system in case you cannot agree with your opponent on, on another legal system. And I offer you some infrastructure, otherwise you wouldn't come. <laughs> and you pay, pay a, a fixed price for that per year, right? That's the deal. And here are my rules and everybody signs a contract. And, have a look at the contract in advance. If you do not like the way I do it and, and the way this is set up, just stay where you are. If you like it, I guarantee you this is the contract. I'm not going to change the contract. I'm not going to change the rules every year what is happening to our to us, right, under our current governments. Constant change of rules. There is, the social contract is constantly changed by one side and usually to our disadvantage. So this is different here. We have really um, a contractual relationship. And for the first time in human history, that would be a real social contract. Even Rousseau, by the way, he asked for that. He said, well, for the very first time, 100, you need 100% consent, right? Because, I mean, everybody is subject to that majority rule, but you cannot implement majority rule by majority rule. At the beginning, you have to, everybody has to agree. And that is exactly what I... I'm, I'm not even, what, what I basically am offering, I say, look, these are the rules, and the rules are very simple. Um, basically, what you pay for is, is more or less security and, uh, and the legal framework, some dispute resolution, uh, tribunals or whatever, um, and, and some infrastructure, and, and have a look. And for the, for the rest, you can do what you want, but have a look in the contract. There will be some rules, um, like in, well, in, in, on a cruise ship, right? There will be some rules and um, you cannot just do what you want. And if you don't like my product, you just don't buy it. That, it's that easy, right? And so this is the idea. Of course, the, 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 the more problematic thing is how do you get a territory, but just to understand the model. And that is something that is, of course, far <laughs> advanced to Monaco where you have a bunch of rules. I don't even know all the rules that are existing in Monaco, right? That, that would be, and I also was really um, 
not satisfied with the taxi situation, right? Monaco is uh, not even the French taxis. I mean, Monaco is small, it's two square kilometers, right? So it's surrounded by France and not even the France, French taxis are allowed to pick up people in, in Monaco. They only allowed to deliver you, Jeff, from the Nice airport and then they're not allowed to pick anybody up uh, when going back. So that is certainly something I mean, we have no problem with all kinds of competition with, with Uber and Lyft and whatever. So that it would just not be regulated and it would immediately pop up that problem. So this is more or less the, the idea of free private cities. Yeah, yeah, and I remember the uh, taxi situation in Monaco. That was one of, like I said, one of the only things I didn't like. It was actually really hard. I was there during Yacht Week, which most of the yachts were for sale for Bitcoin, by the way. And uh, uh, you just could not get a taxi anywhere. Like uh, we had, we had people that you know had a lot of money, Bitcoin people who flew in to meet with us, and they were just stranded for like hours in Monaco. There was just no way to get out. Uh, but you also mentioned that uh, with your contract, uh, that uh, it's not like the social contract, which changes all the time, and that's the problem with the social contract contract is it's not a contract it's, it's just like an idea so obviously that changes all the time and and many people who if they're kind of new to anarchy or new to voluntarism it's basically the same thing if they're new to that uh, they might go oh, it's just it's no rules it's just chaos and everyone's just killing each other it's like no you can have as many rules as you want as long as they're agreed upon in private so absolutely no problem at all that uh, you're trying to create private cities that have a certain set of rules and you can agree to them if you want to go and do business or live in that city absolutely no problem and I I hope you do very well we could we could use this all over the place uh, so much better than any sort of governmental type system of course uh, so why don't you give us a, a, a you know what what's sort of the st status of where you're at when it, wh how long has free private cities been around what's your success been so far what are you trying to do what uh, what do you expect's going to happen perhaps this year that sort of a thing yeah well I'm basically free private cities as a company is only basically working for, for about a year since 2017 because I, I had to prepare my thoughts and um, um, and, and my approach is, is a really is, is a business approach. So the first thing to, what I wanted to do and I'm, I'm nearly finished now is bring down my thoughts on paper so that in case I fail others can pick up and continue. And it's a book and it's nearly finished and it will um, will be published in the next month. Uh, first in German language, then in English language. And, and this will lay out the, the ther theoretical groundwork. Uh, I mean, for people like you probably are, have no much, not much problem of understanding the, 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 the concept that is, that, is, uh, I, that is my experience with the libertarians and anarchists, they, they immediately get the concept. But for the rest of the world, they don't immediately get the concept. So I have to lay this, explain this a little bit. And the second half of the book will be then how do you implement this in practice? And, and then the next step, that was my idea. The next step should be a, a business brand. How do you basically, what, what money, what amounts of money do you need to make it happen? What rules do you need? And, and how do you handle that? Um, and how do you set up security, et cetera? And the third step would be approaching investors. But reality is different. And what happened is that I have been approached from, from several groups who have read my articles and, and uh, saw some of my speeches and said, well, that is a great idea. We have never thought about living together as a market, but we think you're right. And, and look, here's, a, here's Central America is a project that is very advanced. And would you like to become part of that? And I became part of that. I also, um, uh, I'm in good contact with the seasteading guys and, and uh, they have a project in, 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 in French Polynesia and basically what they are doing is, is the same like me. I'm trying to negotiate with um, governments to get such an area. And there's another project in Myanmar that is in the independent territory of the current people. And this is also basically already started. So um, there's a lot of things happening at the same time. and. And of course, Roger Ware um, has come up with, with his project that is also basically a similar idea is to, to get sovereign, sovereignty or partly sovereignty from an existing country and get the allowance to establish your regime there. And um, I'm also um, basically, if for a country, it's not that, easy. I mean, the free private city approach might be too far away. 
um, as any anarchistic approach to, to, to traditional governments, but what they do understand is special economic zones. So if you say, look, this is the next level <coughs> of special economic zones, it's more or less a special administrative zone like Hong Kong, um, just compare the relationship Hong Kong and, and China. So Hong Kong has a certain independence. They have even their own currency, they have own institutions, and they have their own uh, constitution. So if we can reach something like that, and here's my offer to the countries that is, um, if there's a virgin territory and no, you have no income out of that uh, territory, right? Now we come with our idea. We bring investors, but what we need is a 50 year or about a hundred year guarantee of uh, unchanged situation. And, um, and then we, when we set up something there, which is uh, at the end after 20 years is something like a Hong Kong, that is a win-win situation, right? That is, in my view, the only realistic approach because um, I've studied all these um, libertarian projects of the past, uh, be it Werner Stiefel uh, or, or the Minerva project um, uh, on the coast of Australia, and basically trying to get something from states against their will is very difficult and probably will not prevail other if you're willing to fight with your gun okay maybe then it's a a, a a secession by by armed forces but if you want to do it peacefully and then i think there's no other way than to negotiate with the existing government and that's exactly <clears throat> what i'm planning to do um and uh, been, besides my, my activity as an advisor to the, the projects i've mentioned uh, and they are very interesting projects, and and I think we can only learn even from failures. Um, and the more competition, the better, right? I can even imagine as a as a business person, I'm I'm what I'm Jeff. What I'm basically um, offering is a kind of a a minarchist scenario. It's, it's a it's a classical liberal state, but it's not a state. It's offered by a private company. But I'm also open to establishing an, an, a nice capitalist zone in such an area so that you can try out new things there. And we can see, okay, this works, this doesn't work. And so I can, I can imagine that I offer a different private city to different target groups. And we learn over time, some, some do work, others don't. <laughs> because I mean, you, you're probably also a financial guy that is, is, is doing some investments, right? So my problem with, with some of the uh, people from from our scene is that they think they have discovered the one and only uh, method of living together. But if you have ever invested at the stock exchange, you know that even the the, the most well researched trail could go trade could go wrong, right? That's how how life is. So there mm -hmm. is no perfect solution because some scholars have written a book and that's how it works. You will see if you try it in practice, it will be different. So we have to try, try it out and to learn and to say, okay, let's try an anarchistic approach here. Let's try the minarchist approach here. Let's try another approach there. And then we find out two things. First, what is the product that people like? And second, secondly, what does work and what doesn't? And not me and that nobody can tell this from his desk. It's not going to work like that. The reality is different. But we have to try it out. And, and I think my personal guess is there's no one solution that fits all. There will be probably different models that all work. And for some people, <laughs> maybe even I would switch between the models. When I'm young, I prefer this model. When I'm old, I go to another model, right? a more conservative model, whatever, whatever, whatever right? So this is my, my view of the world. And I, I, I just want to be somebody who is one of the guys who is really doing it on the ground, who's really doing it for profit, that is, for me, that's extremely in, uh, important because the profit element is the, the, what it makes really, what forces you to treat your customers well, otherwise mm -hmm. you're not making money because people will leave or they just don't come in the first place. And secondly, you are forced to make a wise use of your resources. So this is, this is, I think, also the reason why some of the other projects that have been around for some years now will fail because it's just a group of people and everybody has a different opinion and there's no real leadership and there's no not real responsibility. 
Whereas I clearly say, well, look, I want to make money, right? That is transparent, right? I want to make money, but I offer you something that is, that is liberty and it's security and that will lead to prosperity. I, I'm basically in it as a, of course, for me, it's also a philosophical thing, but, but it is important that it is a business model and it's a business offering. I think so. No, absolutely. I'm an anarcho capitalist, so you're not going to get any uh, arguments from me that profit incentive is very important for almost everything, uh, as you pointed out, and the reasons why. And that's why communism in general just never really works. Is there's no incentive to actually make it work. Uh, and, um, you know, it's really an interesting time right now uh, that, you know, we haven't really been able to try these things. You, you pointed out the importance of being able just to try different ways of doing things. We just have not had really that opportunity in this world for a long period of time. Uh, and uh, now, as, as I pointed out at the beginning, we're starting to see, like, we're, we see something like Liberland with Vichet Lika startup. We're seeing uh, Roger Veer trying to buy an island, create his own sort of anarcho-capitalist country. We're seeing the seasteading. It looks like they're, they're getting pretty close to having something going. Uh, and it actually, you guys are as well. And I know you, you don't want to talk too much about it because you're in negotiations and things like that. But you guys are actually progressing in, in numerous areas right now. So we could actually see in the next couple of years what you just pointed out, which is actual options for liberty lovers. It's like, oh, I tried this one. It, it was sort of like this minarchist approach. It was all private. It wasn't real government. But I don't know. You couldn't you know, buy nuclear bombs on the street from some vendor. <laughs> I don't like that. I want to be able to buy nuclear bombs if I want to buy them. So I went to Ankapistan, which is Roger Veer's island. And it's crazy, but it's it's you know it's so much fun and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is where we're getting to. It's really exciting. Uh, I think uh, at the same time we're sort of seeing statism dying, right? Uh, we've seen these governments that are all bankrupt now. Is there any government in the world? I think there's a couple that aren't bankrupt. I think it'd be those more free sort of cities. It'd be Monaco. It'd be Singapore. It'd be Dubai, probably. Uh, yeah, uh, Hong that Kong. is interesting. Uh, the basically the the smaller states they are all in better shape, right? The, the for example Monaco has. Uh, I think they have three years of expenses uh, as a reserve, right? <laughs> and Liechtenstein has one year. So that, that it's, it's the opposite of being in debt, right? They have it in the bank, <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> right? So it, it does exist. And, and this is also, I think, um, after, that, there's another observation. If a, a country has basically passed a certain size, it's unsteerable, right? It's, it's like with with companies. I mean, you know that I basically, many people say, yeah, you cannot lead a, a state like a company. And I said, well, in my model, you can. That's exactly what you're doing. And what, what I can observe in the real world is there is no company, no single company in the world that has, that has well, there's one that has more than 1 million employees. That's Walmart. They have 2.3 million. This is the biggest company in the world per, per capita, right? per head count. And that's, that is a sign, and the sign is, if something is too big, it's obviously unsteerable because this is a natural development, right? This is a spontaneous order. Nobody has decided there has to be a cap. The biggest <laughs> company in the world should not exceed two million. No, no, there is no rule like that. It just developed like that. And so I think this is a clear indication that if you're getting too big, you cannot steer it any longer and, and you will basically then ruin it at the end, right? And that is why I think the city approach, the free private city approach is the right size because that's steerable, even a million people living in a city that you, we can handle that, right? Yeah, it's so interesting. The, uh, you know, you have all these sort of things popping up and, and different ways of governing. And, and you're totally right on, on the sort of size issue. And you look at why governments are all failing. It's because, well, first of all, they're not really on that profit incentive, although they do extort all their citizens for so much money, but they don't really run as a business per se. They kind of run as a sort of mishmash collective where everyone robs each other. It's really a weird, bizarre sort of a way to do things. And because of that, they all just go into massive amounts of debt, as you pointed out. Whereas if you have the smaller sort of ones, uh, they tend to be 
better because, well, first of all, they're, they're, they don't have as many things to sort of manage or govern. Uh, and, um, and, you know, you can kind of manage, like you said, maybe a million people, maybe two million. But once you start getting bigger than that, and then when you have it even worse, where it's not even a private company that has a profit incentive, but it's actually a government, it's just a complete and total disaster. So it's going to be so interesting to see all these sort of models being rolled out over the next few years. And I'm personally so excited. I'm already a diplomat of Lieberland. I already have bypassed some uh, lines in airports as a diplomat. You know, I'm just sort of like living the the libertarian dream at the moment and seeing like my friends, like people like Roger Veer starting up his own country. And I'm like, okay, he's a friend of mine. I should be able to get in there and, and be able to do something there. And, and people like yourself doing things. So as soon as I hear about private cities really getting off the ground somewhere, I'll probably be there that day uh, and starting some sort of business in that area. I just want to be part of these sort of things. And it's so exciting that we have the opportunity to be a part of numerous different options, as you said now. So for people out there who are watching uh, and they're they're interested, they're like, oh, I want to be a part of something like this. What What's sort of the uh, level of involvement that you can sort of uh, let people know about? Of course, they can go to your website and read about it. But is there any way they can get more involved? Can they help? Can they uh, invest? Can they do things like that? Yeah. No. What I recommend at the moment, at the time being, is just subscribe to my newsletter. It's not a traditional newsletter so that I'm telling you my philosophy every month or every week. It's just an, a newsletter to, to be informed what's going on. And I'm also referring to other projects in the world. So I'm, ex and if you subscribe now as an interested person, um, I expect that there will be an announcement in the next six months. I look, there's something starting. And you can be either an investor, you can be somebody who is putting up a business there. We like you as a resident, or maybe even as an e-resident who has access to our dispute resolution, which will be much cheaper and more effective than traditional courts. And you can, you can uh, um, uh, have a bank account there and, and start a company there. That is basically comparable to the Estonian e-resident model. But of course, we would prefer to be you a real resident there, even if you're only three or two months a year there. But if you, if you have a, a base there, and this is something I'm also interested in, right? To have a base in a safe haven, in, in a safe uh, haven of liberty. And um, who knows what, what's happening? And, and, and so far, I think, uh, I, I share your enthusiasm because I think it's going to happen. It's because it's, it has to happen. And after so many years or decades or centuries that people have always recognized all the revolutions and all that, that only turns out that another group of people is then governing other people. And we, we want to take care of ourselves, right? And we are responsible for us and our families and we're not harming others, but we want to be left alone. And there's no offer for people like us in the world, right? So, and then so far, and, and now with all the Bitcoin and crypto success, suddenly people like us have, have a lot of uh, financial firepower. And um, I think therefore it's going to happen. And there will be failures, but I think we, we will really see it happen and we will see some fail and we others succeed. And when I was, was holding a speech in Vienna in, in Austria, I was approached by a young Brazilian guy who said, well, I'm, I'm 22 years old and I've heard about your project and I want to die as a free man in a free private city. <laughs> and I said, wow, okay, that is, that is something, some motivation for me to make it happen, right? That, that, and, and I can tell you, I've, really, some people are really relying on me that, to, to, to help them, right? Because they see it's, it's not really... We are so fed up with what's happening in Germany and Europe and basically most European countries that people say, well, please make it happen. I'm, I will immediately uh, uh, relocate to your place. Well, I hate to tell this young man, but his dream probably won't happen because once he starts living in a free private city, there'll probably be technolo technological innovations that will make it so you don't have to die if you don't want to because really the government's... Yeah, immortality. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be stem cell like uh, places on every corner and all that kind of stuff. Well, but so, if you, you can always die if you want, right? As a one yeah, or you, get, you could get hit by a car. Uh, there will be Uber there, I'm sure. And uh, who knows? That is possible. But yeah, uh, you know, it's so exciting. 
exciting. So uh, really glad to have you on. I'm definitely going to be uh, following all of your progress. Uh, and uh, definitely I'll be signing up for your newsletter just so I can make sure I, I know what's going on. Definitely keep in touch with us here as you have any uh, major uh, progress. I'd love to have you back on the show. I'd like to even invite you to come to Anarchapoco this year. I know it's only a month away. Uh, we actually just had a couple speaking spots open up. Um, I, I, I think I can announce. Yeah, I can probably announce this. Uh, Rick Valkthing of the uh, Pirate Party said he couldn't make it due to sort of some health issue. I uh, hope he's doing better, whatever it is. But uh, we have a few speaking spots open. So we can talk offline or online, whatever you prefer. But I'm really excited about what you're doing. Uh, Roger Veer is going to be there, of course, Vich Edlika. So it makes perfect sense if you want to come there as well and, and talk oh, about yeah. free private cities. Yeah, thank so you for the invitation. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard about your, your conferences. And um, uh, certainly what I really want is people to understand that there is a for-profit market model as a solution to their problems. And in so far, if you can spread this, uh, this message, uh, I would love to do that. Great. So, yeah, you do have an inv invitation. So it's a Narcopoco February 15th to the 19th. Uh, and um, it's probably almost sold out at the point that people see this video. We have uh, we can only hold 1,200 people in the conference, and we're already over 1,000 tickets sold. Uh, but uh, if you can, uh, try to get a ticket if it's still available. And uh, uh, Titos, if, you, if you'd if like to come speak, just let me know, and we'll put you down while we still have a couple extra speaking spots available. Of course, Ron Paul is our keynote speaker, uh, and uh, a lot of... Uh, just amazing people will be at the event. So uh, super excited about what you're doing. I, I can't wait to hear some progress. Can't wait to be involved in any way that I can. Just let me know how I can be of help as well. And uh, why don't you just let people know anything else you want to let them know, anything we didn't cover, your website, uh, anything else you want to uh, people to know. Yeah, maybe just look at the website. It's called freeprivatecities.com. One word, freeprivatecities.com. And there's a lot of additional information, material, videos and articles. And again, you can subscribe to the newsletter, which is not coming off to maybe three or four times a year, but you will be then up to date what, what's going on with free privacy and related projects all over the world. So I would love to, to have you uh, there and um, uh, you can also uh, send me a, um, an email if you have a proposal for a territory or whatever, or are an interested investor. And maybe we see in uh, in Acapulco soon. Sounds good. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share down below. And hopefully one day soon we will have a, a numerous places, as Tita has pointed out, that we can choose from. And uh, w maybe we can all die sometime in a free place somewhere or may or maybe not even have to if, if we have access to all the technology the government keeps out of our uh, ability to uh, experiment with. So uh, like I said, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share down below. And that's it for Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the Internet. Peace, love and anarchy. In a world where Antifa riots in the city streets, cops rage out of control, and the leader of the free world is a fat-ass casino owner, one event stands alone to make anarchy great again. I actually love humanity. That is why I'm an anarchist. Words in the building like we the ceiling, we healing, no matter who find it appealing, I'm here, and I got a feeling that we'll be dealing a lot of pain with a pin of ceiling, get drilled in your head, that we are monsters, and yeah, we come from the slums, and for months we've been pumped, but for once I am now comfortable, I want to grow, I want some more success, and I want to know that greatness can't be rushed, can't be less, so face the bus, feel free to hate on us, we lace them up, dudes, we done paid them up, keep snakes away from us, and safe from us, you might wanna be, remember when clowns used to make fun of me, and now they wanna be me, see me, and they run at me, I'm gonna be the greatest, yeah, I wanna be, but I am not the Wanna be the biggest for the sake of being played, I'm here Like I never left, said to hell Nah, cause I can't just fail So just prepare your ears, it'll get for real We will never take the sale, it's quiet time My mind and my thoughts, my thoughts and my thoughts My wins and my loss, when will I fall off? It's a chance for me, you are now listening to veracity yeah. Fuck the media, fuck the banks Fuck drone strikes, fuck tanks Fuck hunger, fuck war, fuck ignoring of the poor Fuck the left, fuck the right, fuck the government Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you